so you don't understand the essence of Brat Summer. So we can spend all day talking about Charlie XCX and her iconic album that was just released, Brat. But instead, what I want to talk about is something that is a little closer and personal for me. Her bad girl punk reality TV show, I'm with the band the story of Nasty Cherry. First things first, we always like to go over credentials here. Other than having watched the show twice now, I do do a really good Charlie XCX impression. Kamala Harris's brat, cigarettes or brat, romance, hanging out with gay people, Ray Ratma's YouTube channel is brat. My disclaimers are, we're gonna talk about a TV show as far as I can tell, these are real people. Reality shows can be a little not real and it's hard to say necessarily what things were like edited for entertainment purposes. As always, I'm gonna do my best to get things right. First things first, who is Charlie XCX? Charlie XCX was born Charlotte Emma Aitchison on August 2nd, 1992. She is a Leo queen in Cambridge, but was raised in Start Hill, Essex. Oh, I'm from Essex, babe. A promoter found her on MySpace and invited her to start performing at illegal warehouse raves. She signed to Asylum Records in 2010. She moved to Los Angeles when she was 16 years old. She rose to huge success and prominence with the song, I Love It, in 2012. <laughs> I crashed my car into the bridge. I watched, I let it burn. Also the song Boom Clap, which was featured in the Fault in Our Stars soundtrack and had a huge impact on our nation, on our culture. I was a big Fault in Our Stars fan. I read the book multiple times in high school, sobbed each time. Her being on the soundtrack didn't really register to me at the time. So the thing about Charlie XCX is that she's had these huge pop singles and people like know her name, but I don't think that people ever really like clicked or registered like who she was. My impression of her has always just been that gay people love her. When my fans and I meet, they always get me to hold poppers and go gay rights. My fans love poppers, poppers. My fans, popper, pop, poppers, pop, 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 popper. Okay. Brat is her magnum opus. She just released it this summer. It's been widely claimed. Whenever we see this shade of green, it will forever be Brat. Billie Eilish just dropped her remix of Guess. I'm obsessed with how horny she is. <laughs> Charlie likes boys, but she knows I'd hit it. Check out Nicole Raffi and on Carly's videos about Charlie XCX because I love those girlies. I want to be part of your club. Hi. I'm gonna link those videos in the description. But today we're talking about I'm With The Band, the story of Nasty Cherry. I'm With The Band is a docu-series. Can we call any reality TV show a docu-series? I really don't understand the branding of this. Like why call it that? I guess maybe to make it seem more like professional, but it's, it's a reality TV show. It just is. So it premiered on Netflix, November 15th of 2019. The idea of it is basically let's watch a band be formed. So what the heck does Charlie XCX even have to do with this? When we meet her on the show, she's got a fuck ass 2019 bob. I'm sorry. With the like dyed tips. This is very like King Kylie era, very Tumblr. Charlie starts right off the bat with saying something that deeply offends me personally. I wish when I was 14, there was a band like Nasty Cherry, unashamedly real and also badass. For some reason, the show and a lot of online publications have referred to this band as an all-girl punk band. It does make me raise an eyebrow. Mm -hmm. If you're on this channel, if you've been here, you know this is not the first time that an all-girl band has existed. It's a show. She can say what she wants. She's Charlie XCX and you should never disagree with her and that's something that you do learn in this show. She also says that she's looking to launch a band in a whole new way. So the next person we meet is Gabby. So Gabby's full name is Gabriette Lee Bechtel, but she is known professionally as Gabriette. Gabby is also a Leo, like Charlie and like me. She's the youngest of the group. She's the least experienced, has never 
played an instrument, never been in a band, never sang. She's a model and an ex-ballerina. I heavily agree with the fact that you do not need musical experience to start a band. And I think it's cool that we have some varying levels of experience in this band. Gabby remains pretty unproblematic throughout the show. Next on our roster is Chloe Chides. She is a Capricorn. So Chloe's the lead guitarist of Nasty Cherry. She is also the front woman from the band kitten. So Chloe is a very bubbly, outspoken, outgoing personality. She is kind of the source of a lot of the tension within the band. She's also the most musically experienced out of everyone in the band. She sings, she plays bass, she plays guitar, she has all of these years of experience in the music industry. She's been signed to a label. The band kitten that Chloe is the lead singer of was formed in Los Angeles in 2009. It's kind of like an alternative indie rock new wave 80s inspired band. So Chloe is the sole consistent member of the band. Fun fact, right before they released their EP, Cut It Out, in 2012, Max Kuhn, Elvis Kuhn, and Zach Corper left Kitten to focus on their other band, Fiddler, who I saw live. I'm not a huge fan of Kitten, it's just not my genre of music, but it's fair to say that they have really made a name for themselves in the music industry. They opened for Charlie XCX in 2013, which I'm guessing is how Chloe made her way into this little project that Charlie has molded. They've also opened for bands like No Doubt and Courtney Love. Hilarious. In the Smashing Pumpkins. So our next member is Georgia May Summery. She is also a Leo. Hello. Way too many. Georgia is the bassist and she's never played any instrument before. She started learning how to play bass for the band. She struggles with major imposter syndrome, which is very normal. So this band is like half American, half British, which kind of gives them a wider audience. So the Brits are like, oh my gosh, it's like another another band that's from our, our country. How exciting. And then the Americans are like, oh my God, like... <laughs> Forget I said that. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Let's move on. Debbie Knox Houston is our next member of Nasty Cherry. Nasty Cherry. So she's from London. She grew up on a Greek island for a while. She is a Taurus. She's the drummer of Nasty Cherry. She drummed for Charlie XCX. Being Charlie's friend is how you gain success, apparently. Which leads me to my next point. Industry plant? Question mark. So an industry plant is basically a musician who finds success very quickly and oftentimes despite a lack of skill or merit, quote unquote. So a lot of people get accused of being industry plants when they aren't really. There's a difference between like working really hard, getting discovered by a label, and then looking like you just came out of nowhere when in reality you've been doing music for a long time and working towards getting the support that you needed to become super successful. But what's happening here is not really that. <laughs> Other than the case of like Debbie and Chloe, it's a little industry plant coded. It's unclear to me what Gabby and Georgia's relationships are with Charlie. Them not having any musical talent, but then immediately given all these opportunities for this band is industry plant behavior. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not critiquing it for that. I'm also not jealous. I'm not jealous. Don't you dare say that. But this is basically how The Runaways started too. A person with a lot of power in the music industry. So in the case of Nasty Cherry, it's Charlie. In the case of The Runaways, it is what is that awful man's name? I told you last time I don't have room in my mind for men's names. And look at me now having to look it up again. Kim Fowley. Charlie XCX is the Kim Fowley of Nasty Cherry. Because she basically did exactly what he did. She just found some musicians slash people with the right look and said, here, here's a band. Now do it. Now make music and then I will tell people about it and I'll give you all the opportunities and I'll book shows for you and I will give you my producer and it's gonna be great and I'm gonna make money. <laughs> she starts promoting Nasty Cherry before they have done anything at all. I would love to know what it was like to be a Charlie XCX fan in the months leading up to the release of this docuseries. She was promoting Nasty Cherry on all of her social media accounts and people were like, Hey queen, um, what is, who is, so what's this, so why? <laughs> to put it in perspective, she was linking Spotify account slash Instagram account that had no music and no posts for a band that doesn't like exist yet. And she's like, this is my, this is my favorite band. You should all go follow it. And they're like, 
yes ma'am she even brings them out on a red carpet and people are like who are nasty cherry and they're like and they haven't even written a song yet the girlies are all moved into this beautiful house in los angeles georgia and debbie being the ones from the uk having to move to los angeles for the band they do a good job at like establishing really the stakes for them are a lot higher because both chloe and gabby are from los angeles we get to meet their parents they come to visit the house georgia and debbie are not afforded the same luxuries and are feeling very isolated and depressed the biggest conflict of this series and really they could have boiled it down to like two episodes is chloe clomitted you like what i did there we kind of hash on this topic for a while the band all really feels like chloe should put in a hundred percent of her effort to nasty cherry they're on kind of like a tight deadline to start producing good music that that lives up to all of the hype that charlie has given them chloe is confident that she can do both when the group is all talking about like establishing boundaries and making a practice and writing schedule chloe's talking about how she needs like a day or two to go and be with her band practice with her band georgia makes a comment about like well yeah but like we all have our stuff like gabby has like yoga and like i've got this other thing and so you know like we gotta just like kind of make sacrifices and chloe's like "Mm -hmm." (laughs) in that moment what chloe should have said was kitten is more than just a hobby for me it has been my main source of income for the majority of my life i am very passionate about it that comment hurt my feelings this isn't what chloe does so that comment may have been a little insensitive i don't think georgia really meant it in that way chloe not confronting her about it in the moment immediately led to a lot of resentment but the band does have some good points about chloe's involvement in both bands chloe is first and foremost a singer and a front woman the band is a little bit worried about whether or not she can be as excited and committed if she's not singing but she wasn't asked to be the front woman she was asked to be the lead guitarist it's like not a supernatural way to start a band you don't just like get plucked off of the street by charlie xcx who's like do you want to play lead guitar sorry i need to stop if i have a british audience i'm so sorry i'm so sorry It won't stop. So we do get to see a lot of like bonding with the girls. They're learning how to play their instruments. They're writing music, having some fun. One thing about Charlie XCX is that she loves to throw a party. They decide to have their first performance by throwing a party, which is such a smart idea. And that's exactly what my band did as well. Also, oh my God, I can't believe this. I forgot to mention that I'm in a band. If you're considering starting a band, this is a great way to get your foot into performing is just by doing it yourself. Nasty Cherry has like a songwriting session that goes so well and they're kind of like producing it themselves. So when you're making an album, you go through like a pre-production phase. It basically is like a way for you to like get the structure of the song and be able to hear it that way. It gives you an opportunity to like pull out all of your like ideas and stuff. To do pre-production, you're often working with a producer who is the one that's like got the computer and is is like giving suggestions or like helping you get out an idea or maybe making some changes with you. The girls are writing and they're kind of like producing on their own as well. They're like, oh wow, it's so cool to like see our ideas come to life and we're doing it all ourselves. They do have a session scheduled with Charlie's producer so the girls are on their way to their pre-pro session they're like guys it feels like it's like kind of like a bummer like we were doing really really well like on our own like do we even need a producer especially a man they're all on the same page saying like it would be really cool if we could just like do this ourselves or at the very least like work with a woman female empowerment you know like be be role models be representatives for young girls and stuff and i'm thinking like go off absolutely i agree however that is not how it's received in their conversation with emmy and charlie so they call emmy the producer of the show or manager or whatever pretend this is a phone you're chloe I'm Debbie. On the phone is Emmy. Hi, Emmy. So we're on our way to the session and we were thinking um, that we just had like, so much fun um, working on music ourselves. And here, 
here, Chloe, do you want to take it from here? And then Chloe is like, yeah, um, hey, so, like, I would just, you know, like, we were thinking about, like, it would be really cool to, like, work with women, and, um, like, I just, I was just thinking, like, maybe we could, like, work with somebody else, or just, like, we just, like, were gelling so, like, vibing so well back at the house, and, like, we didn't really want to, like, interrupt that flow. Emmy is like, hey, guys, um, the session is in 20 minutes. It would be really unprofessional for you to cancel. If it feels uncomfortable, part of being a musician is learning how to work with other people. Go to the session and uh, figure it out. Chloe's like, you know what? Yeah, totally, okay, I totally get it. Totally, totally fine. Maybe we can like hopefully recreate that flow that we had with a man. <laughs> so in the middle of their session, Charlie calls Chloe and wants to speak to all of them. So they leave the session for a sec to get yelled at. Charlie is like, yeah, so Emmy told me that you all feel like working with a man makes your music less valid. Is that true? I am Debbie, you're Chloe. So I think Chloe um, said that, and I am, I am quoting you here, Chloe. Um, so I think that Chloe said that, well, we all want to work with women, but like, I totally get, like, I personally get that, like, we're gonna work with men. Uh, Chloe, what were you saying? So Chloe basically just like repeats herself. I spoke to Emmy about this. I totally agree. We're all good now. We're at the session. We're working. Charlie took it extremely personal when Chloe said that they wanted to work with women. What Charlie heard was... I think that your music isn't valid and you're not empowered woman because you've worked with men, which is not what they said. So this is basically what Charlie says. Let me fucking tell you, I work with a lot of men and that does not make me a less empowered woman. I define my fucking success. Working in a studio is a fucking exercise in collaboration. I showed up and didn't waste people's time or cancel 20 minutes beforehand when we busted our asses off to get it for you. Chloe's like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. I totally agree. Totally agree. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so sorry for sharing. Just wanted to share that and just wanted to apologize. I just wanted to say sorry. Um, so yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally get what you're saying and I totally agree and I'm just so sorry. I'm so sorry, Charlie XCX. <laughs> Charlie kind of like lays off a little bit and she's like, well, okay, well, I'm sorry for ruining the vibe, but yeah, get back to work. <laughs> Truly no one had Chloe's back and they were supposedly on the same page, but to be fair, their boss, who is Charlie XCX, is like yelling at them for having even suggested an idea. So I understand why none of them feel like they could speak up and defend Chloe, but it would have made a really big difference if they had. So all of this combined with some other tension leads to Nasty Cherry losing a cherry. Debbie is like producing one of their songs and she like puts in a bass line and Georgia is like, okay, but like we need to make sure that I can actually play this. Chloe is like, hey, like let me help out. And it seems like they don't like even really hear Chloe in the moment. And Chloe's like, well, I, I did play bass for many years. Chloe just gets really frustrated. The rest of the girls are like in the living room and Chloe is like, I gotta go. Guys, I gotta go deal with something. I just gotta go now. So I'm just gonna leave and I'm gonna go and I just gotta go deal with something now. I gotta go. And the band's like, all right, okay, cool. Are you good? And she's like, yeah, I just gotta go deal with something, but I'm, I'm good though. And that is Chloe's favorite form of communicating is just piecing out and not actually saying how she feels because she has good reason to feel this way. Like I'm not saying I'm against Chloe in this at all, but I dislike how much she doesn't communicate. The rest of the girls are not intentionally trying to make her feel this way. And if she had just brought it to their attention, they could have made progress and not made her feel so unappreciated if they had known that that's what they were doing. So when Chloe comes back, she reads a letter that she has prepared. Sam, the first night at bed when you left, Ron made out with two girls and put his head between a cocktail waitress's breast. Here's the actual letter. I've tried so hard to put on a cheery smile day in and day out, but I'm hurt by feeling so unappreciated after everything I've given to this band. I realize I cannot be in this band any longer as it is now. The second she said the words as it is now, I knew she knew she was gonna come back before the next episode came out. You know what I mean? Debbie's like, hang on, can I just like say something? And Chloe's like, I'm not discussing this. Debbie's like, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like we should talk about this. And Chloe's like, I'm not discussing this right now. I'm not discussing this right now. And it's very like dramatic and annoying, honestly, very frustrating. This is the most frustrated that I get with Chloe is seeing the way that she leaves the band because it's very like, I feel unappreciated and so I'm gonna leave. And the conversation could have been, 
here are some things that have happened and here's how they made me feel and here's what I would like to happen moving forward. It's basically like half an episode that Chloe's not in the band anymore. They have a conversation with Charlie and Debbie's like, I feel like this was really unprofessional. Chloe's feeling very righteous about it. She's talking to her band and she's like, they'll see what happens when I'm not there. She wants to feel appreciated by having them feel her absence, which is not really a cool way of going about it, but whatever. Charlie like gives them this like big pep talk. It essentially saves the day. So then we've got our finale. We see the girlies do a cutesy little photo shoot. Charlie's like, so I just got an offer to do a show in New York on Friday, which is the day of the show and your big debut. So I said yes to the show, so I can't be there for you. I'm so sorry. I really wish I could be there. I really wish I could be there. I am like obsessed obsessed and they're like oh yeah no 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 I totally understand like business is business like do your thing <laughs> they're clearly so sad that Charlie can't be there so they sell out the Moroccan lounge in Los Angeles their songs that have been released are streaming really well they put in some clips of them performing crowd loves them Georgia and Chloe make up in the parking lot after the show for realsies and it does seem pretty genuine so that was the end of the show so I did do some follow-up to see like what happened to these people after the show and what happened to the band after the show. Nasty Cherry releases three EPs, never a full length. Their last EP was The Movie, which was released in April of 2021. They did play Gov Ball in September of 2021. Georgia says in a DM to a fan in October of 2021 that they are waiting for Debbie to get a new work visa to work on some new music. However, by September of 2022, everyone except for Debbie has removed Nasty Cherry from their Instagram bio. So around that time, Chloe was seen in an Instagram post imitating a KKK scene or something. I don't I don't understand. It just looks like they're trying to be really edgy and it's honestly really gross. Georgia shares this on her Instagram story and says, disgusting and vile to the core, dressing up as a KKK member for humor, shock value, attention, while posting videos and photos of young black women on her Instagram feed and stories is the most fucked up lack of consciousness I have ever seen from someone I actually know. It kind of like follows her even to this day. It doesn't seem like people are super on board with Chloe anymore. The comments on her recent posts are not necessarily like talking about this instance in particular, but they're kind of like calling her like cringe, I guess. None of the band members of Nasty Cherry except for Debbie follow Chloe now. I think that this is kind of what put the nail in the coffin in terms of Nasty Cherry ever coming back. I don't think that they will. In terms of the rest of the members, Georgia is releasing her own music as Poodle now, kind of like electronic indie pop. She just released a single called Bull Rider in June of this year. I'll put links if you want to support that in the bio. Debbie drums for the band James, which is an English rock band from Manchester formed in 1982. She also does a lot of other projects. Girl is booked and busy and I love to see it. She's my favorite. Finally, Gabrielle. So Gabrielle kind of like blew up in 2023 as like one of the like it girls. She really pioneered the aesthetic succubus chic. And I would say it's about being really hot in like a scary way. Mm. She is a very successful model. Since September of 2023, Gabrielle has been dating Maddie Healy, the controversial vocalist of the band 1975. I am not a 1975 fan. I will not defend and Maddie Healy. I have no reason to. I think he's lame. And I think it's interesting that she's with him. They announced their engagement in June of 2024. Charlie XCX is engaged to George Daniel, who's the 1975's drummer. They're still clearly involved. One of the songs on Brat 360 features a line that mentions Gabrielle. In terms of Chloe, Kitten is still technically a band, but they haven't released anything since 2021. He's now in this group called Psy Sound, and it's really hard to figure out what that's about. I've listened to one of their songs. I don't know. They're rebellious art club music something or other. I. She's released some solo music, which is fine. She's married. People don't seem to love her. When you do racist things, it's kind of hard to move on. <laughs> My first conclusion is that the show is fine. I think it could have been a lot shorter. The first time I watched it, I was like doing stuff with it on in the background, which I think is the appropriate way to watch it. The second time around, I kind of skipped through some stuff because how many 
disagreements about Chloe being in another band do I really need to sit through. You can watch it on Netflix. I pretty much told you everything that happens, but it's an okay show. My next conclusion is Nasty Cherry is not a punk band. I don't mean to get super defensive over the label of punk because I'm sure that there would be people out there who would say my band isn't punk and like it doesn't really matter to me what labels are used but it was extremely misleading when I learned about the existence of this band. This is how I figured out about Nasty Cherry and about this TV show. I had been getting photos of Gabrielle on my like Pinterest because I was like being recommended a lot of the succubus chic stuff because I do I'm susceptible to trends okay I really I was into it so when I looked up who Gabrielle was in like her bio on Wikipedia that she was a part of an all-girl punk band I was like oh my god amazing um she's like my best friend I was very disappointed when I learned that they are just like an indie pop band which isn't a bad thing it's not bad I mean they're good it's good music it's like a, it's fine it's not it's not really my thing. I'm not the target audience. Charlie XEX is a little mean. I think she was a little mean. I do think the core of their issue was just a lack of communication and that's common for people. I mean, it takes a lot of strength to learn how to appropriately confront your feelings and be totally honest with people. But that phone call with Charlie XCX yelling at them, her in a position of so much power over them should know better than to like, basically treat them like she's like a principal and they're her students and she's just like disciplining them in a way that like made me feel really icky. People can be imperfect and have imperfect opinions and take things really personally when they trigger them in a way of like maybe Charlie feels insecure about like having worked with men or something. I don't know. I don't know these people. I can only speculate. Just thought it was a little mean. A little mean. That's it. My last conclusion is that you should start a band. You should just do it. It's fun. And you don't need Charlie XCX to do it. It certainly does help you become more famous. That's not the only reason to start a band. Some people do it because they like it and it's fun. Especially if you're looking to start a band with like all girls or with all non-cis men. That experience is like really truly special, especially in an industry that is so dominated by men. I love my band. It's been the best and coolest thing I've ever done. Guys, um, do me a favor and like this video. And then also subscribe -y if you haven't yet, please. Please. I will put my socials and my band's socials in Spotify in the description if you are interested. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Bye.